I had a chance to walk through an Alliance Valor fifth wheel at an RV show a few months back. And I was really impressed. Now this is their travel trailer line. This is basically a Valor. And this is the smallest one they make. Now I have my truck here. I'm at Paris RV here in Payson, Utah. Be sure to check these guys out if you're in the market. And if you do buy, let them know you saw the video, okay? Let's go ahead and start on the inside of this rig. In the next video I do, I am going to drop the weight down on my hitch to see how it affects the squat, things like that. Now the Valor 21 T15 is just under 27 feet long. You have two 13,500 BTU AC units, walkable roof with PVC covering up top, massive 320 watt solar panel, plus you get a 20 amp charge controller and wine guard is up top too. Make no mistake, this is probably one of the nicest travel trailer toy haulers I've ever seen. I normally walk through these, I don't normally do videos on them, but nevertheless, this is one rig that you really have to consider. So in this area, they have two Coleman Mach AC units. And I don't think you need it to for this rig. You also have two entrances for the bathroom, which I'll show you here in a second. Now, normally I don't show this to you guys this way, but this rig just got here. And you see that you have a pocket door. The slide is in. So look at how much walking area you have to get into the bedroom. You can get to your closet and you can still get to the bathroom without having to like put the slide out. And if you don't necessarily have toys in here or if you don't mind pulling the toys out, you could sleep back here and leave the slide in. So this is something to consider. And of course you have your happy jacket and you have a bed above there. And let's go ahead and open up the back. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the door down. You gotta be really careful. This door is kind of heavy, so you kind of have to walk it down. So you can use this as an entertainment area, or you can use it as a ramp door to get your toys in. This is a 15 foot garage, I believe. If I said that wrong, I'll put it back here in the video. But there's a lot of floor space. You can see the, the D-rings on the floor. So you can tie things down pretty easily inside of here too. But let's go ahead and hop back in. I just want to show you guys this. And I think we're going to leave it open too. Now out back, you do have power plugs above here. And I like that they give you a window on both sides. Check out your blinds. Room darkening. And check out your kitchen. It's just on this one side. Nice countertop space, large sink with a divider. And then check out how big this is. This is huge. I mean, that's something you see on a pretty big fifth wheel. And something I like about Alliance is they do make pretty much everything they have 101 inch wide body, even their tiny fifth wheels they do. They also reinforce these drawers so you can put heavy stuff in here. And they are using a graystone oven, which is, this is probably the biggest you're gonna see on this size rig. Three burner cooktop above. Also check out this drawer down below. This is for your pots and pans and because they reinforce it, you don't have to worry about those falling through. Most likely this is gonna be a 12 volt refrigerator. Most RV manufacturers are using these now. And yes it is. And this is actually a decent size too. And here's the top. And then even further up, more storage. Love the tinted glass. This is my kind of RV. Graystone microwave. It is a small one, but it'll get the job done. You have your vent fan. They do provide a light down below too. Huge windows. Lights below here too, if you're reading. And then check this out. It's pretty much gonna go side to side. And you do have a vent fan that works really well in this area. You turn it on from here. It also has lights. 
and a motion light too. And check out your control panel. I'm not a huge fan of these, but these get the job done. You can control your water heater, water pump, tank heaters, and then here's some of your lights. This does have ground effects lights, which is nice. You can put out that awning pretty easily too. And one thing that every RV manufacturer needs to do, dimmer, check this out. That is super nice. These lights are really bright at night and I like that they give that to you. And so I almost forgot to show you guys above the sink here and I apologize. So you do have a JBL sound system inside and out. And then here's your television. And let's go ahead and push this slide out. You ready? It's gonna be a Schwintech slide. And I like how they allow you to put the bed up this way too. Control panels down below. A little bit of storage right there under the bed. Now they don't put a television in this area, but you don't really need one. Well, let's go ahead and put the bed down too. Alrighty, so let me just show you guys. Power plug down there. Here's a walk area. I love it. Storage above. And as you guys saw, even when the slide is in, you can still get to your closet. You can fold your clothes down there. A little bit of space down below here. And they give you a rack too to hang stuff. Do they put lights in here? I don't see lights. But you have enough from the lights on the ceiling in here. And then check out the bathroom. They do provide pocket doors for both of these areas, which is a huge save. They are using a plastic toilet, which is interesting. And decent size shower. I mean, this is what you're gonna see on these size RVs. Vent fan, that can be controlled right here. And they do provide the lights on here too. Actually, wow, it gives you a lot of light. I'm actually surprised by that. It's a good bit of light. Small sink, but you do have some countertop space right there. And there is storage below here. Now let's go ahead and check out the outside. One more thing. I like the clearance that they give you from the RV to your truck. And of course, if you get a weight distribution hitch, it could put it further back for you as well. But power tongue jack with a light right there. And works pretty well. You have two propane tanks with storage for batteries. So you can probably build a nice little battery um, bank right there. On this side, you have your uh, Onan generator. There it is. You have your Cummins Onan QG4000. And that should run this entire rig too. And then check out your front cap design. There is a light right there. And then that's the exhaust for the generator. You have manual jacks, large awning with an LED strip below it. They do have a light or a porch light as they call it right there. Aluminum steps and Westlake tires. Now I've heard that Westlake tires are not a terrible brand. You just have to make sure you keep the tire pressure maintained, things like that. But here's the capacity, 2,470 pounds per, and that's gonna be at 80 PSI. ST225-75-15. And this is a load range E-tire. There's no upgrade for the suspension, and they provide that spare tire out back there. More manual jacks. And then your speakers are above right there. And then check out the back while it's open. I don't know if I can put this up with one hand, but we'll try. Yeah, this door is definitely heavy. So I would even recommend having two people with this. Or at least a spotter. So there's the back. You have some um, loading lights right there. I like these too. They're finished in black. 
They have a nice appearance. They give you a handle on both sides. 30 amp power. They must be using soft starts for the AC units. And then this is where you're gonna fill up at. And this is how you fill up your toys and how you can turn the pump on and off. I like that they lock this stuff obviously because you know, thieves do exist in our world, sadly. All right? And here's just a better look at those tires. They are nitrogen filled, I don't know if I mentioned that. And then here's a slide out on this side. Suburban furnace. And check this out, this must be like a 12 gallon water heater. Is that 12 gallon? Sure, it's 12 gallons. And then here's your storage for the outside. You probably noticed that there was no storage on the passenger side. So that's not a surprise because of what you saw on that side. The bathroom's over there, so there's not enough space for that. Here's your wet bay. Got your outside shower. They have lights, power, cable. You can control the water pump out here. Nice stuff. And this is under lock and key too. And then here's where you're gonna dump from, your low point drains are down there. And this is where you're gonna pull your valves from. You hopefully you can see that. I love where the freshwater tank is. It's like almost right over the axle. So if you are traveling with full water, that's not gonna put a bunch of weight on the front of the trailer, which is gonna obviously turn into pin weight. You do have to watch your head with this slide. I almost hit my head just now. But apart from that, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. So gross fuel equate rating for this rig is 11,000 pounds. So this is a HD trailer. That's what I'm gonna call this. And gross ax weight rating is gonna be 5,200 pounds per. So that's good. Pretty much covers the entire rig. And unloaded vehicle weight is 7,242 pounds, which gives you 3,718 pounds of capacity. So that's really good for this size rig. Now let's go ahead and either use my truck as an example for hitch weight and see if it has enough capacity or I might pick another truck for you guys. I recently did a video on this 2023 Ram 2500 Laramie. This also has a Cummins option. Now, anytime I do a truck review, I try to show you the window sticker and the payload that we have a good idea how the options are gonna affect that number. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at everything in the spreadsheet. I have the numbers in for the truck. The only one I'm not sure of is the gross combined vehicle weight rating, but the towing capacity and everything else is gonna be accurate for this specific build here. Now, what I did was I assumed the husband and wife 200 pound male, 135 pound female, and a 60 pound dog. I also figured 250 pounds for cargo inside the bed of the truck, which gives you 645 pounds. Now, the payload that I'm showing you here is from that truck as I mentioned. So if you take this number and subtract it here, this is what you have left to tow a trailer. As far as the Alliance goes, we just saw the numbers for the trailer that I reviewed. Now, if you go onto the website, you always see this happen where the dry weight's a little bit lower and that's because of any options. Take note that batteries and propane are never filled from the factory. So you have to make sure you keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing your numbers. So what I do is I take this number here and I divide it here and that gave me 13%. So in this scenario here, I'm gonna use 13% because if you do plan on bringing toys with you, you're probably going to keep that number the same or you could even decrease it depending on how heavy your toys are. Like So if you have like a side-by-side -side or something like that, that could actually take some hitch weight off of the truck. So with that being said, if you take 7,242 pounds and then multiply that by 13%, that's gonna give you 941 pounds. Now, obviously no one goes camping this way, so we have to add weight to the trailer. I'm gonna go ahead and max out the loaded weight here. And if you multiply that by 13%, that's gonna give you 1,430 pounds. So with this passenger weight and cargo, you're left with 52 pounds of payload. So you really can't really take anyone else with you Whenever you're doing your numbers, I think for a trailer like this, I probably would go for something that has like 2,500 pounds of payload or more because if you do plan on putting heavy stuff inside the truck, like a toolbox, if you want to get a 50 gallon fuel tank, you won't be able to use this truck. So I would just keep that in the back of your mind. And of course, any half ton truck will not work with this setup here because this is a heavy trailer. And one last thing to note is this. 
I don't know if the generator is included in this hitch weight online. So the hitch weight could be potentially heavier depending on whether or not they added that in these numbers. But I hope this was helpful. Again, special shout out to Paris RV. Be sure to give these guys a look up if you're in the market and I'll see you guys in the next video.